Hi everybody, it's Mike from Here the Watchman, and we are excited today to come to you with something that's truly amazing. A movie, a documentary that was done involving Kevin Shipp, former CIA operative and whistleblower, who talks in the movie and the other people in the movie talk about how the CIA influences Hollywood. You can see behind me, there's Kevin out of the shadows. Kevin, thank you for taking time out of your busy day to join us. Mike, my friend, thanks for having me. It's great to be with you. Well, Kevin, talk to me. You know, you were at Hear the Watchman in Dallas, like the right. last conference in person right. that wasn't canceled. Uh, we just that was a close one, yeah. Yeah, it was a very close one, you know. You gave an awesome presentation there, and, and you've been through some harrowing times. Uh, and now you're coming out of that. You have a book, a wonderful book that's called Out of the Shadows. Uh, people, you can find that online. Just Google Kevin Shipp, S-H-I-P-P. -P. Order his books. They're off the hook. Crazy great. Uh, Kevin, what in the world led you to get involved with making a documentary? Well, uh, Mike, for, for years, I have been watching the occult uh, in Hollywood, and occult activity in Hollywood. And when I was a police officer in Arlington, Virginia, I uncovered a satanic uh, cult within the high school there. And so I've been following that through, especially into the film industry, all the way up to Madonna dressing like Baphomet in her concerts and things like that. So <clears throat> I was fully aware of that. I knew about the P Podesta emails. They had never been disproven. That's what that's what was being covered up so badly is the fact that the, the symbology in Podesta's emails is accurate and legitimate and no one ever questioned it. So when I got a call uh, from out on the West Coast, um, listen, we're thinking of doing this film exposing the occult in Hollywood and, and uh, Project uh, Mockingbird, the CIA's influence of the media. Would you be interested? And I said, well, oh, yeah. I mean, I've been, I've been uh, researching that for a couple of decades now. So we set up a little meeting uh, uh, on the coast of Savannah, Georgia. And I got to tell you, Mike, <clears throat> uh, I, I had no idea what I was walking into. <laughs> yeah, I never met these people before. I didn't know who they were uh, at all, whether they were really Hollywood or not. And so what I always do is always come early and, and just kind of hide somewhere and watch who's going and go. Well, they all look like normal people. So anyway, Sue and I went up there and we met Mike Smith, the producer uh, who had just been born again. He had just his back had just been healed from paralysis and he was on fire. He was coming off a long fast and uh, we met, uh, we talked, we prayed and the Lord just told me be a part of this. So humbly I did. I just joined in, uh, did my part as Brad and, and uh, Liz did. And then uh, Mike, uh, whose whole life has been given to Jesus Christ, Mike just uh, followed the Lord and it produced and put this thing together along with an editor, uh, essentially by himself in terms of production. Yeah, you know, Kevin, I, uh, Jeannie and I watched it uh, uh, the day that you, you sent me an email with the link to it. And we, we watched it that evening and, you know, I couldn't even get up. I, I couldn't, I, I wasn't willing to pause it and get up to get a glass of water or go to the bathroom, I was riveted uh, by the information. Now, one of the things I wanted to ask you, and we'll talk more about the film, but uh, why is it that the CIA, of all, you know, spooky, you know, government agencies, would have interest in Hollywood? Well, Hollywood is the biggest brainwashing mechanism in existence in terms of radio and film and, and, and TV. Entertainment is when you let your brain go flatline and you just soak up with it, whatever's being fed into your mental computer. Hollywood knows that. CIA has been in Hollywood since its inception, as well as in the media, going all the way back to the origin of the Washington Post. They're not stupid. They're not good. They're a little dark. But they're but they're they know how to manipulate the the masses, and they've been doing that through Hollywood and the music industry for decades. Now, but what I mean, what draws them into this? What draws the CIA into it is to control all of us. Is that correct? Well, the CIA's primary goal, and it's illegal and unconstitutional, and that's why I say that in my presentations. Um, the CIA is all about self-preservation. 
and it gets a secret amount of billions of our tax dollars spent on things that not even the Congress or the Senate know about. And if they did, they'd shut the place down. If they knew what was going on at the base where my family got sick, they would shut the place down. So with the CIA, primarily it's self-preservation. They want to deceive the public. They, for example, the, uh, the recent series from Jack Ryan. I don't know if you watch it, the spy no. series. No. If you watch that carefully, critically, the way that we're talking about it in, in the film we just put out, uh, it turns out that Jack Ryan, Jack Ryan's CIA supervisor is a practicing Muslim who mm -hmm. in the film during a time of trial gets down on his prayer rug and prays to Mecca. Guess who that's supposed to be? John Brennan, the converted Muslim. And then if you catch it at the very end of Jack Ryan, just for a second, bloop, CIA disclaimer, and it goes off. The CIA has to put that on everything it touches and every script it has influence on. It's required by law to put it in. It's maybe a second at the most. They pop it in and pop it out, and most people miss it. There's a classic example. The CIA is still doing it. Now, now Kevin, do you think that the the... I mean, how far up the chain of command does this go? Does the president know that this is going on? Well, I, uh, I, I, you know, Ronald Reagan was a great president and a great man. Uh, but George H.W. Bush uh, was a CIA operative in the White House that ran operations that I am 100 percent convinced President Reagan didn't even uh, know about. A lot of Iran contrary in that case. So. Most presidents uh, don't want to know, do not know, or are told by the CIA, hey, we'll handle this. You got enough on your plate, uh, except for this president. <clears throat> He's the first one that's ever challenged the CIA, any president sitting in the White House that's challenged the CIA and actually challenged the product that it put out, um, which is astounding to me because I've been praying for that for years. So the CIA, uh, they've been manipulating Congress and the presidents all the way up until this administration. They're continuing to try to do it now. That's the whole thing behind the Russia collusion hoax with John Brennan at the center of that soft coup, trying to eliminate Donald Trump because he's squared off with the shadow government and the deep state. Yeah, and you know, I mean, it's uh, especially now with this whole coronavirus lockdown, there's so much uh, suspicion out there about what's really happening and uh, to know that the you know the deep state is is manipulating and controlling this at least that's what i think is going on i think they're involved i believe the virus is a virus you know i believe people are dying across the world or around the world across america uh, but I, I i have a little problem with thinking that, uh, you know, this is just some bug that mysteriously appeared. What is your read on that? Well, I think if you look at the results of, of this, of the, the uh, and they call it COVID-19 because really it's the Chinese flu, but that that's not as much of a controlling term as COVID-19, you know, <laughs> so you know that was intentional. Uh, but it's what what is happening around this virus that is uh, unheard of. People can't go to church. Churches can't meet. Uh, the people got arrested sitting in their cars in an outdoor church service. Hmm. Uh, many states have tried to outlaw the purchase of guns. Um, the police are monitoring people in the streets. I mean, these are things if you would have asked any one of us uh, six months ago, we would have said, no, no. never. Well, well, here it is. Yeah. Here it right in front of our eyes. Now, has Donald Trump sold out to FEMA and that's why they took the presidential seal off the podium? No. Donald Trump has not sold out to FEMA. He's letting FEMA do what FEMA does in catastrophes. And taking the uh, changing the presidential seal goes all the way back to Obama press conferences. So I just want to put that to rest. I'm getting a lot of questions about that. Uh, so, but it's it's this virus itself and what it's being used for. My point is, this is not, in my view, coming from Donald Trump. Uh, it is coming from the globalist uh, uh, society to include intelligence agencies in terms of control and their poster boy, Bill Gates. Uh, this is his finest hour for the global vaccine and then the tracing nanotechnology to, to follow that up, which is what he's trying to do right now. So my point is, uh, is that if you look at what this virus has caused, uh, there's something else at work than just the bug escaping from a lab in China. And I think it was an engineered virus personally, um, but it's just, it's, it's, it's mind blowing. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't agree with you more on that. Uh, it's just, you know, it just doesn't add up. I mean, things don't add up. Uh, you know, in the in the uh, documentary, uh, there's a clip there with several news stations around the country 
that say the exact same introduction to a story. Now, is that the CIA manipulating what we're all hearing? Well, that's a great question, Mike. In that case, what, what happens is these newsrooms go to a primary source that they think is safe, like AP or something like that. And they'll take that exact talking point and use it on their show because especially if it's breaking, they're not going to get any trouble because they got it from such and such news network. And then they all wind up doing it all at the same time using the exact phraseology. So no, that's not the CIA. That's, that's them just doing the talking points that they hear from the original outlet, AP or, or, or some other main outlet. They're just trying to stay safe and at the cutting edge of news. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm glad you cleared that up because there's a lot of conspiracy, you know, behind that conspiracy yeah. thinking. But, you know, is the CIA manipulating, in your opinion, what we hear on mainstream news as well as in Hollywood? Uh, yes, it is. And I'll give you two glaring examples. Who is the senior analyst uh, on a paid CNN, uh, analyst on CNN? Uh, James Clapper, the former director of national intelligence, who is this is the expert analysis on MSNBC, John Brennan, you want to talk about Mockingbird right in our face, two of the most corrupt CIA directors probably in history are now giving advice uh, to CNN and MSNBC, which they're willfully using. And isn't it funny that for both Clapper and Brennan, it's all directed at President Donald Trump. Gee, what a coincidence. Yeah, it's it. What a coincidence is right, you know, and and, you know, I mean, look, uh, America, especially uh, back in the let's say the 50s, the McCarthy era, uh, they all felt the CIA was kind of out to protect us and look out, you know, for us. We get these images of spies going out and finding out information about uh, foreign countries that are threats to us. Is that just all myth? No, there are people out there that go out in those countries on very dangerous positions and situations to gather intelligence, especially in, in the arena of terrorism over in the Middle East. We've got officers that penetrate over in there and man, you get detected. You're not just killed, you're tortured. Yes, there are people out there doing that for the CIA and for our country. And they're the unsung, unsung heroes, the good part of the CIA that's ac actually out there doing it. You don't see this kind of unconstitutional corruption or criminal activity till you get in the upper ranks, typically uh, the seventh floor at that level. Hmm. Interesting, interesting. Because I think, you know, now uh, there's a, a lot of people that view the CIA as evil, you know, that they're the CIA is trying to take down America. Uh, and that's just not true, is it? Well, no, the CIA is not t trying to take down America. It's trying to ensure its own survival at all costs, <laughs> including the Constitution. But no, the CIA is not trying to dismantle and take down America. That's, that's the globalist initiative. It is just a corrupt, dark monster that functions uh, without control, has billions of dollars to spend on whatever it wants, and so it, it in, including uh, prostitution and other things, are engaged. You know, it has no ethics. It has no morals. So it is. It's a. It, the people are right. It is a dark organization that functions with a in a complete moral vacuum. Is it trying to take apart the United States? No, it, it's not. Uh, it's just trying to preserve itself. Now, in the documentary, we 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 see some interesting guys. You have, uh, I guess, it's Mike, the one that's kind of the star of the whole thing. Uh, who was a stuntman in Hollywood, was at the top of his game for years. Yeah. And was injured performing, broke his back, actually, yeah. performing yeah. a very minor stunt. Uh, I mean, you, you see pictures of him jumping off buildings and, you know, all this crazy stuff, and he shows what happened to him when he broke his back. It was a very minor thing. Now, these guys were entrenched. And the, the other stuntman that became a director... Uh, I can't recall his name, but uh, Brad Martin. Brad, yeah. yeah. Okay, so <clears throat> these guys were entrenched in Hollywood. What do you believe happened to them to bring them to where they are today? Which is amazing. I mean, they're blowing the whistle on Hollywood. They're they're talking about prayer and they're talking about God. What what led them that way? Well, it's the same thing that led led me. Is you realize that Jesus Christ 
is who he said he was and is, and, and you accept him as your personal savior. That's where it started with my journey in a scripture out of Ephesians. And so it is with Mike. Mike had lost his career. He's a pretty hard, both both Mike and Brad were pretty hard, hard-assed individuals, excuse my French. Yeah. I mean, they're about as, as uh, 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 brass kahunas as you could get. Well, Mike, uh, and this is what this is what happened to me. Uh, God has a way of getting your attention, um, and a lot of times He'll use the works of the enemy against Amen. the enemy to get you saved. Which you know, anyway. So Mike breaks his back, and his entire ego, his entire career is gone. And in the process of time, and, and you'll see uh, uh, probably on the film we we interviewed earlier today, uh, in the process of going through all of that, um, he had some people that shared the gospel with him. He accept, accepted Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior, and his back was healed. Mm -hmm. He was paralyzed, and they had put a bunch of pins and plates in there, uh, and, and his back was healed, and he's walking around fine now. So somebody somebody <laughs> lit the Mike Smith fuse because he's on fire for Jesus Christ, man. He, he's a good friend, a good brother, and I can tell you he is 100% sold out for Jesus Christ, and that's why he did this movie. Wow. I think he he I, I think the two of you should speak at a Hero of the Watchman conference when we when we can yeah. all get back together. You know what I yeah. mean? I mean yeah. it, it yeah. would be it would be yeah. amazing. Now, you know, uh we have the movie done, you've written the books. What's next for you? Well, for me, you know, I'm living on my little off the grid farm with my best buddy. And uh, we're on solar power, and that's kind of the love of our, our life. I, you know, I do a lot of interviews more selectively, and, and frankly, I'm starting to kind of do interviews more with the church and, and with Christian audiences because that's kind of the love of my life. And, and, and so the big ones and the ones outside, I typically don't do much anymore. So I do a little bit of speaking. I do a lot of farming, which we love, and then I do interviews here and there. Well, now, you know, when you, you made some comments to Jeannie and I and some of the other people uh when you came to hear the Watchman in Dallas, uh, about you were moved by the whole thing. I mean, talk, yeah. what was the experience on a personal level that you felt by being there? Well, yeah, yeah, thanks, Mike. You know, I went there as a speaker, and uh, I got to through some of the dinners and things, mingle around with some of the people that were there, some of the finest, most loving Christian people you could meet. And I think I made the comment to, to someone that it went from, oh, gosh, I got a couple of speaking engagements again to just enjoying the whole thing. And for me, it was like rest. And, you know, and, and a lot of people prayed for me, which I, I appreciated immensely. But it was like it was like I wasn't going somewhere to work or speak. I was going somewhere to be refreshed. And that's that's what it was. Yeah. You know, it was uh, it, it was truly a amazing gathering, you know, and. and uh, I think one of the things that uh, I noticed uh, about you is that when you were there, you suddenly realized you weren't alone, that you had you had people out there and they they were they were just there for you to pray and to, uh, as you say, refresh and get ready for what's to come. Yeah, that's exactly what I saw, Mike. You know, it's uh, uh, me coming out and talking and things. It can be a very lonely experience at, at times, and I get a lot of wonderful uh, messages and prayers from good Christian people. But, but that really meant a lot to me that there were people that were standing with me and that that prayed for me at the dinner, as you remember. Um, it meant more than me than I can even express or even say. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm going to tell you something interesting, and, and uh, uh, most folks know I live in a very remote town in the mountains of Idaho, and. And I've started a new website, folks, if you want to go out and take a look at it. It's not only hearthewatchmen.com, but I do something else to try and help our community, uh, which is called salmonidaholife.com. You can go check it out. I'm working on it. And, and I ran into someone the other day in the process of this who had gone on and looked at Hear the Watchmen and sent me a, a little note saying, uh, do you know Kevin Ship? What is Kevin Ship really like? And I said, "Hey, he's a normal guy who's in love with Jesus, and he's just doing his thing out there and making a difference in the world, which is what we should all be doing, isn't it?" Right. No, that's right. That's what it's all about. Yeah. Well, listen, Kevin. I know you've had a wild day. Uh, so have I. Uh, we're going to let you go, but I want to thank you so much for 
you know, spending a little time with us. And we'll look forward to having you and Mike at another Hear the Watchman conference down the road. Mike, my friend, thanks so much for having me. That sounds good. Well, listen, folks, that's going to wrap it up for today's edition of the Watchman's Report, especially during these times when you're stuck in the house. Remember, there's nothing you can't do with Jesus in your heart, except nothing at all. Go out and make a difference in your community. Go drop some groceries off at the front door of an elderly couple that can't get out. Do something. Don't just sit at home and complain. Get out there. Do something. Never give up and always help people. We'll see you next time here on The Watchman's Report.